Seems like we're on a bit of a CD-ROM drive kick lately. Howdy everybody in YouTube land. What we have in front of us today is yet another CD-ROM drive that is in for repair. Uh, I don't know if it works. It probably doesn't, which is why it's sent to me. Um, but I don't know why it doesn't work yet. But we need to take a look at it and see what in the world's going on. Now, one thing I've noticed right away is this thing is built like a tank. Like this cover is just cast aluminum. Same thing with this bottom cover. It's not sheet aluminum, it's not sheet steel, it's cast. It's kind of crazy. But, so as we can see, it is a Toshiba CD-ROM drive, model number XM3401B. I don't know what speed this drive is or anything like that, but what I do know is it's a SCSI drive. And there's the SCSI ID. And also, manufactured November 1993. So, it puts it right in that era of fun, if you know what I mean. Anyone that's been watching this channel for a long time and understands retro technology in general knows what year that means. So, and the other clue is right here. So, this section of the board looks like it's a little dirty from where... The rest of the board's not so bad, but that section there looks crusty, which I can only imagine why that is. We have leaking capacitors, I can just about bet. So, alright, um, I think what I want to do is take this apart, but before I do, I'm going to grab a caddy and I'm going to grab a CD, and I want to see what this thing does. So we can determine, you know, if it actually has a fault and what that fault actually is. Now, I'm not going to grab a whole computer out to do this. I'm just going to put a disc in there and I want to see if it even picks it up. So let's grab all this stuff to do that. All right, so we have our power adapter connected, which I need to turn the power on. And then we have our sacrificial CD. Nope. Alright. Did not read it. Okay, so... Well, now this is a CDR. Not all drives can read CDRs, but... Most of these can. At least it's been my experience anyway. So, at least these particular CDRs. So now I'm going to have to take this apart and see what we go got going on inside. Maybe we have a laser problem. But perhaps more commonly or more obviously, we've probably got capacitor problems. So let's pull this thing apart and see what we got going on inside. All right, after removing some screws and then taking the front cover off by popping these clips loose, this comes off the top and then this door will actually stay behind on this lid. But this is an interesting design. It needs the lid, I think. But let's see what we got going on. Let's turn the power back on. The laser is all the way back here, which has me kind of concerned, but we'll see. It's trying, but it just kind of gives up. All right, let's see what the lens is doing without the disc in place. See if that thing at least moves. Yeah, it does move. And I have a beam. That's the biggest thing I wanted to see. I wanted to see if we have a beam. And we do. We have a laser beam. So, alright. We're going to have to drill down further and get to the board and see what kind of capacitor mess we are dealing with. Alright, so I got the bottom cover off now, which is just laying over here. And it's a very thick piece of aluminum. Got a little bit of warpage, but not a big deal. This thing was not cheap when it's new. There's no way. So, now that we can look at the board, it doesn't really tell us much. We still have to take, take it further apart. But one quick observation we can see right away is we have 
servo adjustments, but no indication on what any of them actually are. So you'd have to have a service manual for the, you know, the drive to know what they do. Then you wouldn't go fiddling on them anyways. But one to my to my point from earlier, um, when we saw the failure mode, you could hear the servo lock and the speed increase, but then it would lose lock. And it's because the spindle servo PLL will not lock in. So the dot, the tracking servo works, focus servo works, that is working. It's the disc spindle servo that's not maintaining lock. And it tries three times before it gives up. So you'd have a, a, a disc PLL adjustment for the CL, I think it's CA, no, I, don't, I think it's constant linear velocity. I don't remember. Because I know because I know the laser disc is one way, but compact disc is another way, something like that. But anyway, so we got to take this apart further so we can get to the bottom on the other side of this board and we can see exactly what's going on. All right, so it looks like it's as simple as just taking out these screws that are in the board and then loosening up and removing these ribbon cables. Now be careful with this one. This goes to the laser and that's why that jumper is there to prevent ESD damage to the laser. Good thing is, it's a very humid time of year, so I don't have to worry about that so much. So I'll just lift this up and see if there's anything underneath. No, there isn't. Looks like it's all carried through that ribbon cable. So that's kind of nice. All right, first observation is this isn't like the Sony drives. This one uses, it's not linear tracking. It uses uh, a motor assembly here. So let's just do some gear inspection. It's got some grease on it. It's still pliable. Let's look at the motor gear up. Oh, it looks like we got a little split. Yeah, right there. It's starting to split. It's not, it hasn't gotten bad yet. I mean, it's, it still works fine, but that will eventually become an issue. So I got to figure out how to address that before it does. Um, let's see. Second observation is we have these small through hole electrolytics used sideways which was so common back then so we're probably going to need to change those because this is the servo motor for the spindle but we'll just set you out of the way for now and let's take a look at this circuit board okay upon first observation this 100 microfarad 6.3 is leaking it's shot so that's got to go uh, the other thing, too, is it looks like it uses these little plastic box capacitors that you would think are tantalums, but they're not. If you look carefully, they're actually electrolytics, and they're starting to go bad. You can see the corrosion right there on the pads on the board, where it's slowly leaking. So, And these are the same caps they use in like the Sega Game Gear and stuff like that. They absolutely need changed, but be careful. That looks like a capacitor, but it's not. That's a crystal. It's a Motorola ASIC. Yeah. There's the uh, ROM. I'm not sure how that socket works. I could try to dump that ROM to preserve it, but yeah, that's all nasty and corroded. That's got to go. Yeah, that's got to go. Um... Oh, that's cool. The SCSI signals are labeled. So these got to go. That's got to go. I'm sure these two here are going to have to go. They're 220 at 4 volts, which I think I have some of those. And then all of these box caps have to go bye-bye. So, yeah, there's two, three. These hundreds are long. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen of them. Did I count that right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, I got fourteen capacitors this thing needs on just this board alone. And then we have four over here. So that makes what 18 total um what's underneath you <laughs> we gotta look under here make sure they're not hiding under there anywhere doesn't look like it there's the sled motor and there's the lens cleaner seen better days 
So every time this thing, I see why they park it there because they make that go over the lens. I don't like that because that will scratch the lens over time. I might end up actually removing that to be honest, but anyways. Okay, so now we're going to have to get our capacitor list together. We're going to have to pull these caps, clean the board, and then try this thing again after we recap it and see what happens. Because we're not, we're not obtaining spindle lock. And the only explanation for that is one of these is bad. The other thing I want to say is make sure you take good reference photos and diagrams before you start cutting into this thing and recapping because first observation is yeah the board's marked what they're supposed to be like 10 microfarad 6.3 volt but they're not marked which one's negative and which one's positive and i'm pretty sure that the hash mark on these mean negative so that's the negative pin this one's pretty easily identifiable and it's probably industry standard back then but I don't think they make these anymore so it's hard to tell so we're gonna have to use regular through hole caps and then fold them over for these so um, but yeah that's a 10 microfarad 6 volt and that's the negative mark so we need to mark somewhere either on a diagram sheet that you make or the board or something to indicate that that is the negative terminal so just something to be aware of when you're recapping something like this. Alright, now the next thing to note is if we look at these two caps here, here and here, there's really no designator on which one's the negative. There's just a bar there. And that's because if you look at the board, they're bipolar capacitors. So these are non-polarized. So I don't think I have any non-polarized electrolytics. I'll have to look in my stash. I don't think I do. But what I can do is use like ceramics here, but you have to be careful because it can cause unexpected behavior. And I don't know what's going to happen because if you use a ceramic in place of this, the value of a ceramic capacitor will vary based on the applied voltage. So it's almost like a Varicap or a Varactor diode. Very similar. But it's sometimes it's an undesired operation in the exception of this, or like in the example of this. So if this is in a servo circuit and this is a coupling capacitor, if the applied voltage varies all the time, it's going to change the capacitance with it. So yeah, you got to be careful with that. So if I like if there's three or four volts sitting there instead of ten microfarad, it might be an eight point five microfarad, you know, because of the applied voltage. So. You can't just put ceramics in there and hope for the best. You kind of got to look at the circuit and know what you're doing before you can even do something like that. All right, so I got all the new caps on this board. Now, a couple things to note. One, actually the board had a mark, a line, a, a screen print line. You just couldn't see it because it was under the cap to indicate the negative. So I was good there. But also, I don't have the right 100 microfarad caps, so I just stuck those in there, and they're a little on the tall side. Now, you can't do that unless you look where the board is sitting. So, for example, this one here is up by the spindle. I got plenty of room there. But this one it sits right here on this gear train, and it just barely clears it. If I push on this board a little bit, you can feel the... Uh, optical pickup drag across it as it moves so I don't know if that's gonna work out but we'll give it a try all the other caps are done now I had to use ceramics for these bipolar capacitors and unfortunately it is in the servo circuit this one goes up to here so I need to see if it's gonna work at all I don't know we're just gonna have to play that one by ear so Alright, so this board is now out of the way. Now, we need to get to this guy here, which I think are all bipolar. I'm not sure what these are yet. Those are, what are those? 22 at 16, yeah, I have those. I don't know if I have that exact one. I'll have to look and see, but I think I have those. 
see that is definitely yeah these are these aren't bipolar those are standard so I have those I'm gonna go ahead and change those two and then we're gonna test it all right boards back in there I need to check clearance issues make sure it's not rubbing not really all right so okay so now we just put the disc in and see what happens see if we can obtain disc servo lock nope definitely not but I got different behavior just rejects it immediately though all right so one of two things we're either going to have to retune this thing or those two ceramic caps that I put in the servo circuit like I said are a problem because like I said there's very limited places where you can substitute ceramic for electrolytic and vice versa so servo circuits are precision enough you got to use the right technology capacitors when you're recapping it and this is why right here this is why but I'm assuming that's what happened here but I I have a feeling because I've worked on enough of this crap but the servo is not nearly as loud as it was before so all right uh let's keep plugging forward all right, instead of a CDR, I've got a press disc. Let's see what it does. Almost. It's still struggling. It's losing focus lock. Now, almost almost there almost have it so we're losing focus lock for some reason from the laser don't know why yet all right so i've been tinkering with this thing for hours and hours and hours well not that long maybe two or three hours but um i was even adjusting the laser power level a little bit and i wasn't really getting a whole lot of change so i set it back i had to turn it up a hair but it's pretty much where it was before, just turned up a little bit. Turns out, I was adjusting the servos settings underneath, which was not that hard to do because there is no service manual for that drive. But the difference is, um, it uses a, a TA81, it's, you can't already see it, but it's a TA8191 servo amplifier, servo drive. And it, there's a data sheet which tells you what all the settings are so i was able with process of elimination i was able to tweak the servo but again it wasn't it improved but it wasn't really doing a whole lot but what did help was actually soldering in the capacitor that i forgot to put in there now now it works amazing how that works the servo is not perfect but it's like working much better than what it did and there it is this was a backup CD I burned probably I don't know how long ago but I'm using the hard uh, FWB um, CD-ROM toolkit extension I have to because the Apple CD-ROM extension won't mount a non Apple drive so yeah, and you don't want to know what's in that folder either. So I'll just leave it at that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it's amazing how well it works when you put the capacitor in there. Oh, God. I could have avoided all of that. Anyways, I got to put that flap down in there. I had to turn the laser power up anyways in order to pick up the um, CD-ROM or the CDR because in the original position, the CDR wouldn't read. Not well, anyways. And it's still, you can hear a little bit of clicking and servo noises, but uh, what can you get? It's 30 years old now, so it's not going to be perfect. This is a Windows only CD, so it's not going to mount on the Mac, I don't think. It might. Let's 
see if it just spits it out. No, it doesn't. I'm amazed. Yeah, it's Windows only, so I'm not surprised. Okay. Uh, yeah, that appears to be working fine. So, the drive is working now. <sighs> but hey, it's a lesson to learn, and it happens to the best of us. None of us are perfect. So, yeah, and that is not the most pleasurable CD either, so it reads it, no problem. Okay, what I want to do now is... I think I want to put the Apple Legacy CD in here, and I want to see if this machine will actually boot from it. Because that'll be a good test if I can start up System 7.6 off the Apple Legacy CD. I'll know this drive is good and ready to go. And then I'll put a music disc in there and see what happens. There we go. Let's see if I can start up from this pig. I don't know if it'll let me, but we'll find out. Ah, you sucker. All right, now that it's all working, we're going to put it back together. Now, these servo settings are basically where they were before. That one is tweaked a little bit, and that one's tweaked a tiny bit. I had to adjust them ever so slightly. But other than that, it's still basically the same. So, seems to be working great. So, we're going to go ahead and put this guy back together, and we're going to wrap this video up. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. It's all put back together. And ready to go back to its original owner. All works fine. Last thing I want to do is I put it back in this enclosure and test it again. But so far everything's working. CDR is working. CD's working. Everything's working as it should. And there's our casualties. All of those parts right there. So not only do you have to recap it, you also have to remember to put the, the capacitor back in. Anyways, so that's it. We're going to move on to the next one. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe and all of that fun stuff. And until next time, guys, thank you for watching.